Hey, what's going on? It's Strange Out. Welcome to another YouTube music production video where my mission is to help you succeed in making music. And we're just going to get right into it today. We're going to be doing Noisia's Dead Limit Reese. I've been getting a lot of requests for this and shouts out to Noisia who's pioneered a lot of crazy neuro drum and bass sounds. Comment down below and let me know what is your favorite Noisia track. And as usual, I'm going to give you guys the preset for free right off the bat. You can download it in the link below. Also, if you want to support me, you can grab one of my jungle t-shirts. I'm wearing the one in black today, but they also come in white, gray, dark gray, and navy. So there's a color for everyone. And just make sure to buy a size up because they are slimmer and fit and they do shrink after wash. So check out the shirt down in the link below. All right, without further ado, let's get right <laughs> into it. All right, let's talk about the waveform. So what I'm looking for is a wavetable that has a good fundamental frequency. I don't necessarily need anything with top frequencies because we're gonna achieve that with distortion. So really I'm looking for something with a nice bass note. So the one that I found worked best was this one under the digital called Antistasis. It has some nice harmonics. Now explore the different wavetable positions. I found around 180 worked best. It gave us a really nice round tone. And then we're gonna increase unison mode to six for a nice and wide sound. And my detune is about 0.15. So it's nice and wide, but minimal phasing. Okay, the next step is I'm gonna go into my filter and I'm gonna be using the multi filters. So basically what these are, are a combination of filters. So for example, this one LH means a uh, low and high pass. I'm gonna use the PNN, which stands for peaks and notch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost the frequency around 300 Hertz and I'm gonna use the resonance to boost that. So around 45%. We can push the drive up a little as well. All right, let's move into the FX section. And I'm gonna enable the distortion and I'm using diode one as the distortion algorithm and pushing the drive up pretty high up to around 90%. So as you can see, we're getting that Reesey sound already. And then let's enable the compressor, then activate the multiband compression mode. So this really smashes the signal. So my threshold is around negative 18 dB and my ratio is at four. And I'm pushing these uh, bands here. So my highs is at 145%, my mids is at 200%, and then my lows are at 100%. Okay, let's turn on the hyper dimension mode and I'm using a unison mode of six. And then I'm turning the band EQ and boosting around 1400 Hertz and pushing it by 2.7 dB. So I'm not going into the specific details of the FX settings. I think that you can just play it around and find a sound that you like. The most important thing is to have your distortion drive set to a high amount and that you're using the multiband compression to really smash that signal and bring that Reesey sound out. Other than that, it's pretty much free for all. The real magic happens is when we move back into the oscillator section and then we're gonna be applying some LFO modulation to create some movement in the Reese. So the first step, let's apply a warp mode to oscillator A. So I found that asymmetry plus worked quite well. This will warp the shape of your waveform as you increase the symmetry. Now we're gonna apply LFO one to the warp mode and just make sure the modulation mount is set to the max. And then my rate is at 0.1 Hertz and we're at trigger mode so that every time we hit the key, the LFO restarts. Now currently the texture of the sound is constant regardless of the key that I'm hitting. 
But to make this a little more funky, I want to apply some key mapping to the rate of the LFO so that the higher the note we play, the faster the LFO rate oscillates. So to do that, on the far right, hit on the note tab to bring up the key mapping grid. And then let's assign the key mapping to the rate of your LFO one. And just make sure the modulation amount is at the max. So now let's listen to the sound as we change from low to high notes. So you might also notice that the oscillator is like changing at a faster rate at the higher octaves. So that's exactly what we want. And that's all thanks to the key mapping grid here. Okay, finally on the bottom right here, enable the mono mode since this is a resync. We only want one note at a time. And then we can increase the portamental or glide so that we add a little more funkiness as we change to the higher octaves. So bring it up to, I say around 400 milliseconds worked well for me. Okay, so we're starting to get that dead limit sound now. Okay, so that is pretty much the sound for the dead limit Reese. Now, the execution of this sound really depends on the notes that you play, and it's really the interchange between the low and high octaves. Okay, so here are the notes for dead limit. So the key thing here, notice that the notes start at the zero octave with the F note, and we move up two octaves up to G sharp. And that gives it that really funky high tone found in Dead Limit. All right, so listen to this. So playing those super high notes really maximizes that glide when it moves from the F0 up to G sharp 2. And since we're applying key mapping to that LFO rate, that rate oscillates really fast when we move up to those higher octaves. <laughs> Now, when I was initially playing with this pattern, I had the higher notes just an octave up, so down here, and it just didn't sound right. So listen to it. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That still sounds really good. I encourage you guys to play with that octave as well. But if you want that really funky, screechy dead limit sound, then you have to move it two octaves up. So shouts out to Aiden who tipped me off on this. So prior to that, I posted a clip of this on Instagram with the incorrect octave and it just didn't sound right, although it sounded nice, but he commented and mentioned how it should have been two octaves up. And once I moved it two octaves up, it definitely sounded much closer to that dead limit pattern. Now in Dead Limit, the sound is more used as a pre-drop as well as a switch up. However, you could also use it as a main bass if you like, and I tried experimenting with that. So I added some drums and a sub bass and used this more as a top bass. Now you can create your own melodies too. So here's my own melody. Now make sure when you're moving between the high and low notes that there is some overlap. You need this overlapping note to activate that glide. Otherwise the glide won't happen. So this is what we got. So 
So this is a super fun sound to play with. And other things you can do, you can modulate some of the filters and play with filtering the sound in and out. There's definitely a lot more possibilities to it, but I just wanted to keep it nice, short, and simple today so you get the main waveform. But feel free to mess around and explore and take the sound even further. All right, so that was my rendition of Noisia's Dead Limit Reese. And the main point here is finding a good waveform to create some distortion with, and then doing some really funky LFO modulation by applying key mapping to your LFO rate. So really that's the lesson here, that we can do some really interesting stuff when we apply key mapping to the rate of your LFO so that you cut changes in the rate when you play different keys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys found it helpful. And if you did, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. I appreciate your help. But that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. And I'll see you at the next video. By the way, if you want to support me, you can buy my jungle production kit. Also, my liquid production kit is out now and you can check it out all in the link below.